Okay, welcome to another video. What we're going to be doing tonight is taking a very quick sort of look, first impressions at the beta version of Fedora 33 ahead of its final release, which is where I'll be giving it a full review. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and install this beta to the main computer here. So we're in the live environment right now, and the ISO was around about 2 GB. So we've loaded up the installer and it's automatically selected the correct language, which is of course English United Kingdom. Let's go ahead and press continue. Okay, so we get a little um, notice slash warning message here letting us know that this is indeed pre-release software and there will be certain risks involved. So we've got two options. We could either exit, which would make for a very short video, or obviously what we will be doing is pressing I want to proceed. Okay, yeah, so the actual installation part of the whole Fedora installation process is really quite simple and it will save things like user account creation for when you do your first boot up after your installation has finished. So all we need to do here then under system is click installation destination and set up how we want it to install the partitions etc. Now we could do a custom sort of manual partition layout but because one of the newest features and probably the most noteworthy feature of the Fedora 33 release is the switch of default file systems to ButterFS or BTRFS. So what we're going to do is just select this disk here and let the Fedora installer pretty much do what it wants and set up the partitions automatically. So we're just going to press done. Okay, so if we wait a few seconds, there we go. So that's now turned blue. And I'm going to get my stopwatch ready because I know this is a beta but I still want to time it. So I'm going to press begin install now and we'll see how long this takes and then once it's finished we'll be booting up off disk. Okay, so the installation has finished and it's done it in around about 4 minutes and 35 seconds. So not the fastest ever, but not too bad. So we don't have like a reboot option built into the installer here. So we're just going to press finish installation and reboot like this. Okay, so we've just booted off disk for the first time since installing and we have been greeted with the start setup, which is I'm going to assume where we're going to set our user accounts, etc. So let's go ahead and press start setup. Okay, so under privacy, I'm going to disable location services, but I'm going to leave enabled automatic problem reporting because I'm going to be keeping this on stored up until and beyond the final release for while I'm doing my review. So let's go ahead and press next and I'm going to skip the online account creation. Okay, let's go and do our normal account and password. And that should be everything. It is indeed. So we can now start using Fedora. Okay, so as Fedora 33 is shipping with the latest version of GNOME, which is version 3.38, you are going to be greeted with this welcome screen, which might seem a bit tedious to some of us. But for people that, you know, aren't that used to the GNOME desktop or Linux in general, I think this is a really cool little feature which will help them not feel as lost when they first start interacting and using their desktop. So it's a simple little guided tour which is going to show you things like your activities button, etc. So it's also going to show you how to type and search for when you're in your applications overview. So most of us will know that we can just type in there for system settings and applications and hit enter and it will open up the application. And then of course we have our notifications in the middle of our screen with our clock there. And of course our system settings sort of quick ones there and power off and all that good stuff. Use software to find install apps. So for the most part in this video, we are going to be interacting with GNOME software to install the majority of the packages. We might also use DNF for a package or two as well. Okay, so that's the final step. Let's start playing around with our new Fedora 33 GNOME desktop. Okay, so starting off, I'd actually like to say I really do like the implementation and the thought process of the GNOME desktop on Fedora. So they've kept it really simple and don't stray too far away from like the vanilla stock experience that you're going to get on GNOME. So you won't find a load of additional extensions, etc. It's pretty much as close to what the GNOME developers intended, which is good for me because I like to change things up and it's good to have a bit of a blank canvas to build upon. So first of all, we've got a little notification there telling us about important OS and application updates that are ready to install. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it's going to do it from the GNOME software store here and there seems to be a fair little bit to go ahead and grab there like LibreOffice, Firefox etc. So this might take a little bit of a while so I'm going to pause the video here and we'll be back 
once this is finished. Okay, so we finished with the first half of the updates, it appears. So as you can see there, it says restart and update. So obviously what that's going to do is restart the computer and then apply the new updates before it actually plants you onto your desktop. So let's go ahead and do that now. Restart and install updates. Let's restart and install and we'll be back in just a moment. Right, so we've just rebooted and we've gone into the installing updates section. So we have a little progress bar there as well as a percentage below it letting us know where exactly we are in these updates. So I'll pause the video once more and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we're finally back in the desktop there. That took a little bit longer than what I would have liked. Right, so we get a little notification there letting us know that the install has completed and we can of course review our options. Okay, that's pretty cool. So obviously we did check what it was going to do before we did that. But if you missed everything before you clicked restart and install, it's pretty handy there that you can then go over there and actually just double check what has indeed been updated. Right, so while we're in the GNOME software store, we may as well go ahead and enable the third party software repositories. And I think that's done. So if we go into software repositories now, we can just double check and see what is enabled. So we have the third party repos. We have the Google Chrome and NVIDIA non-free driver as well as Steam all disabled, but it's very easy to enable them if you wanted to go ahead and install those packages. And then of course we have the standard Fedora ones with the test updates, etc. Okay, cool. So what I want to do before we start setting things up for the rest of the time I'm going to be using it, I want to jump into GNOME Disks and see how it set things up as far as our sort of partitions. Okay, I've accidentally opened up GNOME Boxes. Let's try that again. GNOME Disks, there we go. Okay, so here's our main disk here, and as you can see we've got a free partition layout, but for the most part you're going to have pretty much all of your data on your BTRFS partition there. And then you have a ext4 partition which is mounted at boot and then you have a quite a large efi partition there at 629 mb which of course is mounted at boot slash efi so you might notice you have no sort of traditional swap partition there and you don't really have a swap file either what you're going to be using is zram which should make swapping a whole lot quicker because it's basically a sort of reserve block of device on your RAM which should enable your swap to just feel a lot smoother. There will be like a CPU overhead here and there but for the most part you shouldn't really worry and it should feel a lot quicker with your swapping. Cool, so that's pretty much all I want to check out in GNOME Disks. Let's open up a terminal now. Okay, we need to go into the shortcuts and enable the uh, GNOME Terminal shortcut. Let's just scroll all the way down there to the little plus. Type in GNOME Terminal copy and paste that bad boy down Control alt t and we are done so while we are in here actually i have read up that the backgrounds they've changed the backgrounds up a bit and it's now going to change the sort of color hue throughout the day according to the time so you can see the little clock down there and if we scroll down you can see a few different shades of the default wallpaper there i quite like the new wallpaper as well actually i must say right so let's jump into a terminal very quickly so I'm not going to go too much in depth about the whole BTRFS stuff. I'll save that for the full review, but we are just going to quickly check the sort of sub volume. So if we go sudo BTRFS sub vol or sub volume, whatever's easier, you can just press tab and then type in a list. And I'm just going to do it straight at root there. Type in the password. And then as we can see there, we've got home and root there all good to go. Perfect. So I'm not too sure if any of the actual packages have changed for the most part. I'm pretty sure most of the applications are the same as what they used to be. Although one thing has changed, your default text editor is now Nano. Now I don't really use Nano and I don't use text editors too much anyway apart from if I'm changing config files and stuff like that. So I'll probably go ahead and install Vim. But I thought I'd mention that we do now have Nano ready to go. So let's get out of that and let's see what other actual applications we do have installed out of the box. So it looks pretty much the same. You've got your known boxes there for virtualization, calendar, cheese, contacts, Nautilus, Firefox, LibreOffice, known maps, which has had quite a few updates in the most recent version of known, which we are on 3.38, photos, videos, text editor, software, settings, rhythm box, etc. And then of course in your utilities, you'll have things like known disk and system information. So let's see what the system monitor says. Right, let's jump into resources. So at the moment we are using 1.9 GB of RAM with 1.8 GB cached and we are not touching our swap as of yet. And CPU utilization is pretty good there at single digits on every thread there. 
Okay, so you might have noticed a few differences in the actual application grid due to it being known 3.38. We now no longer have the frequent applications tab. So it's gonna have all of your applications just in the one view there. And I think there's a static limit to the number of applications of 24 now per page. But I do believe you can organize them in any way that you see fit. So if you had some really commonly used programs that you never want the position of them to change, let's say you use Firefox a lot, you could then just drag that to your top row. Let's also say you use software a lot. You can drag that there and it's always going to be there. And I don't really use no maps a lot, so I could then drag it down the bottom there. So then on the rare occasion that I do need to use it, I could just scroll down to the bottom or of course use the search there. So another thing that's new with GNOME 3.38, they've changed the kind of screenshot sort of dialogue tool there and it just looks a lot more cleaner and refined to get to your sort of screen window and selection areas like so. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just open a few applications and see if things are sort of running as they should and I'm pretty sure LibreOffice will have dictionary support out of the box and we are of course using the most recent version of 7 point whatever. Dictionary is out of the box. Let's open up Firefox and see if we have Chrome GNOME Shell installed out of the box. So we will go ahead and install the GNOME extensions extension because we will install some extensions towards the end. So let's go onto the GNOME extensions website. Yep. So let's install the plugin or the uh, browser extension. I'm pretty sure it has Chrome GNOME Shell already installed or we just didn't have to install it. So let's refresh the page. Perfect, so that's all good. I'm not going to go ahead and install that just yet because before I install some packages and get things set up for my time with it, I do want to check what the RAM is at boot without modifying too much. In fact, we're going to go and do that now and then we'll follow on with the rest of the video. So I am going to quickly install HTOP. Right, so we've just booted back up. RAM's looking a little bit higher than what I would have thought it would have been. Bearing in mind, of course, we are still in the beta period. Hopefully that looks a little bit better when the final release is out. So we're using about 1.11 GB out of 32 there. Again, CPU looks absolutely fine and we are not touching our swap. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and install a few additional applications. I am going to need to install GNOME tweaks because as much as I like keyboard shortcuts and stuff, there's certain sort of creature comforts that I've, I'm too used to, like minimize with the little title bar, etc. So let's go ahead and install some packages. So sudo dnf install. We're going to grab GNOME tweaks. We're going to grab GIMP. Is there anything else I need? Because we're going to get some stuff in Flatpak as well. So I think that's all I'm going to grab for the moment is GNOME Tweaks and GIMP. So let's go ahead and enter that now. And while that's doing that, let's jump onto Firefox, onto the FlatHub website, and just download the um, install file for the FlatHub repo because Flatpak should already be installed out of the box on Fedora. So let's go to flathub.org and go to quick setup. Perfect, so of course we could just copy and paste this, but we're just gonna grab the FlatHub repo here, which should open it up in GNOME software for us. And has that install finished? It has indeed. Right, let's open up this bad boy and install that. We will need to do a reboot for them to actually appear though, I do believe. So that's now enabled. And if we was to go into software repositories, we should see it somewhere in here. So let's have a look. Do we see it? There we go. As you can see there, the FlatHub repo is enabled. So do we need to reboot before we can search? It appears that we do. So what we're going to do now is do a final reboot and then just set a few more things up and then we're going to wrap it up there and I'm going to sit down with it with this whole sort of testing period and then of course during the whole stable release and then we'll do a follow-up review. Okay, we are back and Caden Life is now appearing as it should. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Obviously scrolling down will show you the source which is of course flathub.org. So the installed size is 142 MB and the download size is quite high at 1.1 GB. So let's go ahead and install that. And while that's doing that, let's now open up tweaks and set up the Windows title bars. Okay, so let's go straight down to the Windows title bars here and just enable maximize and minimize. Perfect. Of course, you can always do super and H for your sort of minimize, but I'm so used to also having the... Uh, the buttons there that I kind of can't live without it. So while we are in here, let's jump into the appearance now. And of course we are going to be using the Adwater default, but we're going to switch it to dark, but I am going to stick with the Adwater theme. Perfect. And I'm also going to leave the icons on their default as well. 
So the only things that we are going to be changing though, we're going to grab a few extensions, mainly just material shell now because I've kind of really starting to enjoy it. So what we're going to do is jump into Firefox and enable a few extensions and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so all I'm really going to bother getting is the material shell, which if you haven't sort of seen or know anything about it yet, watch my video there. Very impressive extension. I'm not going to go into depth in it in this video, but definitely check out that video if you haven't seen it. Okay, so everything's going to change a little bit. Perfect. And now what we're going to also grab is caffeine. And that's me done, I think. Perfect. Right, there might be a few additional things that I need to do, um, but for the most part, that's going to be me now. Obviously, I will probably set up sort of some snapshots for BTRFS and stuff like that. But for first impressions, seems pretty good so far. I'm really very happy with their change to BTRFS. It's pretty much my default file system these days on no matter what system I'm on. So even the other disk that's currently in this computer is also using the BTRFS file system there, as you can see. My server's now using, and so is my laptop there, so I'm pretty much all in on the BTRFS life. Reading the sort of release announcement for this beta and for Fedora 33, it doesn't appear that it's got the full feature set included, but it does say that they're going to look to adding more features as time progresses. So it'll be interesting to see what has made it and what hasn't. That's been my first look and first impressions of Fedora 33. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.